San Francisco comedy scene and has gone on to appear on such programs as Stick of the Night. He's one of the major comedy people in San Francisco, played all the major clubs. Let's give him a big welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Here's Leland Cotton Brown. My name is uh, Leland Cotton Brown. I don't know. My parents wanted a black child. I, I, don't know. I don't know what's going on there. I think they were using the rhythm method, and so... Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not like... I like the name and everything. I think I made out much better than my younger brother, uh, Buckwheat. So... <laughs> Has anyone ever been paged in San Francisco Airport? It's like you hear your name, just enough to tick you off then God knows what's after that. Leland Brown, of course I'm going to hear one song, please. Leland Brown, do you please, of course I'm going to hear the white song. Yeah, I'll stick a bush down my pants, sure. Uh, no problem. I don't know what to do. I, I knew this guy was calling me, so I, I went back to talk to the guy who announces over the system, and I... I said, sir, I don't know if you realize this or not, but we can't understand a word you're saying out there. Now, you of all people should be able to afford a good, clear sound system. Now, what in the world is the problem? And I guess I must have made the guy really mad because he stood up and looked me right in the eye and said, <laughs> Now, we just have another bit here, money and money. What the hell is your problem? Of course, the thing about it, a tattoo would make a great announcer at the airport. It's just the plane, the plane. That's all you need to know, really. Of course, he actually talks like that. What was his name? Hervé Balachez? I guess. Uh, <laughs> I have a friend who has this uh, limousine service, and he was driving Hervé around, and they stopped to get something to eat. And Herb told him the story. He said, You know, Jim, I was having my car one day, and the car kind of run me over. So I, I threw my gun out, and I saw over his head. And said, yeah, I'll stick a bush down my pants, sure. I can do that. Yeah. We have a channel here that has Macho Week. Uh, you get burnout on Bronson. <laughs> now, back me out. Is it me or does it, Bronson actually look like a guy sitting on an icicle? I mean, if you took an icicle, broke it off, turn it upside down, sat on it, instant Charles Bronson. Hey, that's cold. Good looking man, isn't he? <laughs> Looks like that gets women. I don't understand. The crime shows are so popular on TV now that uh, you guys must have like a favorite cop show, right? Any, I do them all, it doesn't matter. Hail Street Blues, that's a great show, isn't it? It reminds me a lot of Beretta. Beretta's one of my favorites. Uh, I like him because he's very non-violent. You'll never shoot anybody. He prefers to bore people to death. You ever notice this? Look at a guy caught in a dark alleyway. Instead of arresting the guy, he'll talk to him about social science or his ideas of life or what his father told him. Oh, you know, hold it, run me out the heat. Now, 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 I'm not trying to let you change and all that jive, but you made a mistake, you hear me? You made a mistake like this whole damn world makes mistakes. And that's the trouble this world, pal. The people doing wrong, and they know they're doing wrong, and they keep right on doing wrong. I'm telling you, that's really good. Sometimes, you know, this whole world just gets you down, but I'm watching you. Every step you take, every move you make, every breath you take, I'm watching you. And that's the name of that tune. Thank you. Thank you very much, thank you. Thank you. Right. <laughs> Anybody, you guys any drinking one of these? Anybody give the, the straws? I, 
to run your act, it's very hard to be macho with one of these things, see? What? Isn't it? <laughs> like, hey, baby. Maybe after the show, we go back to my place, huh? <laughs> she never wants to go. Anyway. Of course, uh, now this is my theory. I don't know if it's true or not, but I think the reason why we have so many crime shows is because we have so much crime in society. So much so now that people actually carry around protection. Now, do you guys carry protection at all? Okay, let me, let me rephrase that. Because um, I, I know women, they carry mace and stuff. I, I, I carry this. I don't know if you can see it, which is the main problem with it, I think. Pretty bad, huh? <laughs> Come on, buddy. Yeah, you get near me, I'll clean your fingernails. Come on. Yeah, this... <laughs> the only way this is going to protect me like I'm attacked by a gang of hemophiliacs. Which, which, which happens a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> what are you, a bleeder? <laughs> Come on. I'll nick you. It's not often that you're mugged by Russian royalty. It used to be like the main thing was crime shows. Now it seems to be soap operas are taking over. They're so popular now. They have major stars in these shows, like Elizabeth Taylor. You know, to me, this is like having cameos of Richard Burton on Leave It to Beaver. Good afternoon, Mrs. Cleaver. How are you and the other cleavages? Well, we're fine, thanks. You met our neighbors, the crotches? They're wonderful. <laughs> so I thought it'd be great if, like, Jack Nicholson played the part of Eddie Haskell. As you can come to the door one day. Well, hi there, Mrs. Cleaver. How the hell are you? Any uh, Dylan fans here? God, I wish I could do them. I gotta tell you this, because very few people know how Dylan originally got his style, but he was on the force one time singing underneath this big bushy tree, and unbeknownst to him were bugs in the tree coming down and landing on him as he was singing, and that's how he got his style. I just want to eat insect bugs and spiders, <laughs> it does look like a blues brother, don't it? Too bad it doesn't end <laughs> anything like the next character I'm going to do. I always wonder how to break into music. I know, like, people broke into music by doing commercial jingles, like Barry Manilow. I wish he'd quit it. <laughs> but I don't... <laughs> Oh, thank you. Um, though I don't know if anyone ever broke into music by doing cartoon jingles. I wonder what Super Chicken would have sounded like if it had been written by Leon Redbone. <laughs> when you bind your pep in danger, when you're threatened by a stranger, mind it, look it, though you take a licking. There'll be someone waiting who will hurry up and rest you just gobble through her picking. Brook, duck, beep, baby, brook, you beep, baby, baby, don't go to her kicking. Dangerous when you kick it free. Thank you very much. You guys have been wonderful. Bye bye. Thank you. Leland Cotton Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Leland Cotton Brown.